welcome to another episode of Sadie Says. Today's guest is a celebrity astrologer and DJ, and I am a huge fan, the Leo King, David Palmer. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited. I finally get to ask all the questions I've ever had while I've been watching you. Oh, I'm ready for them. Whatever there are, you got. There are so many. And also, we put it out yesterday to my followers and yours, and so mm -hmm. they've been sending questions in as well. So we're going to try and cover everything, but we only have a small amount of time. No problem. So obviously, when you go on talk shows normally, you're discussing astrology and what's happening sort of at the moment or what we have coming up. But any of your followers know that when you're giving um, – the astrology, whether it be for the sun signs, just general deep astrology, you often uh, reference your own life and things you've been through to sort of help explain what the transits are meaning. So I wanted to go back a little bit and learn about how you got to where you are. Gotcha. So how did the astrology journey, I guess, begin and what age? Uh, it began with my mom who was into spiritual books when I was probably seven, eight years old. And then she had brought up that I was a Leo and I was like, I don't know, let me like look into this. But I was really young, like seven or eight years old. And then it was at the library at my school that there was something about astrology. Like, I don't even know how I found it. Research that I was a Leo and was like, oh, this is so me. <laughs> but then it just kind of sat in the background. And then it was high school when it really came out when I was dating girls and looking at signs. And I was on AOL with 56K. And I was, you know, <laughs> looking up like, because I'm a Leo, Leo with this sign, Leo with this sign. You know, I did it like how a lot of people really do. It wasn't like this big, like, I just know astrology right away thing. Okay, so you weren't able to necessarily interpret the astrology when you began. It was more you learned about your own star sign and then sort of moving forward. Because you have talked about the fact that you used to use it as an introduction to girls. Correct. When you were younger. Yeah, because once then I started to understand those signs mm -hmm. when I got to like my junior year in high school. You know, you go to these high school parties and all the guys are over here, all the girls are over there. And it was like, well, this is boring sitting with a bunch of dudes in a <laughs> corner. So I just go over there and like ask the girls that, hey, what, did, what is your signs? And instantly, bang. And I know it sounds so 70s cheesy. Like that's how that was like the pickup line for dudes in the 70s. But it really was more about like, hey, what's going on with you? Like, hey, I love Pisces because they're like this, or I love Gemini's because of this. And it just, and then all the guys would be like, hey, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's my buddy, you know? <laughs> so that's how it really worked. But then it was out of high school. I actually went to the military into the US Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the leader of boot camp. I became a rescue swimmer. And in a rescue swimming school, there was something that just didn't feel right. Okay. After jumping out of helicopters and just like, I built my whole life up of, as a swimmer from five years old, water polo captain of, this, of the uh, varsity, all the way to rescue swimming in the U.S. Navy to where there was something that was like, this isn't right. And it was the first time I'd ever followed my inner guidance. Like, okay. this is off. What was it that felt wrong? Because for me, the jumping out of the helicopters is <laughs> yeah, what would yeah, feel yeah. wrong, but that's just me. But I mean... It was just something inside that felt like I wasn't on my path in my life. Like this just does, does, does all this that I thought in my head was supposed to, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. It's logical, swimmer my whole life, you know, water polo player, like going out and jumping out of a helicopter was nothing and being in the ocean is easy for me. So I'm like, well, I'm just gonna follow my gut. So I got out of the program and then you just can't get out of the military, you know, just because you want to. I've heard that. So they were really cool. They're like, that's the third hardest school. You can go anywhere you want. I'm like, California, that's where I'm from. Ended up on working on F-18s because I love Top Gun. It's my favorite okay. movie. And then that felt wrong. So I started a crazy thing called going AWOL to get out. And it was actually not planned that way. I just kind of needed to figure out my life. But that's not something that the military lets you do. So I ended up getting um, an other than honorable discharge and thrown in jail for 30 days in the brig. Wow. And it was in the brig that actually was a huge sigh of relief, you know, like, okay, I don't have five more years because I had signed a two year deal. Very few extended. people would say yeah. that about being in the brig though. Yeah, I know. You'd think that that's the worst place to go. But to me, it was like, I'm freeing myself to finally get really where I know yeah. some path is that I don't even know what that is yet. So once I got out, 
I really went to astrology and that was when I started going into natal charts and understanding it and I realized, oh my gosh, these transits happened all when I turned 18, all when I was in jail and they were exact. And that's when I was like, there's something to this. And that's really what started the journey. And then of course I became a raver and we experiment in every way with the raving. And that's where I started to really go into tarot. And I mean, you want the true story. The true story is I was up all night and I didn't know what to do with myself. And I was living in an apartment with a crazy situation with a roommate. Then we had, you know, 15 people over every day and night. And so I wanted to get away. So I was at a swap meet, like a flea market. And this psychic little tent lady goes, hey, you. And I was like six in the morning and my sunglasses on. She was just setting up. She threw me a deck of tarot cards. I'm like, I'm not buying nothing from you. And she goes, no, these are for you. You're psychic. You need to know this. Wow. And that's really, that started the journey, doing readings when I came back to the, everybody who thought I was crazy. And mm -hmm. I'm like, this is where I need to go in my life. I imagine, though, that being in that community, in the raver community, and you are experimenting, that there would have been weirder things than that said in that time. Definitely. Well, yeah, I mean, those, <laughs> there's some definitely weird things that happened, but the, the one thing was always this positive light that I kept following. Because even though the rave community is all about love and light and plur, we call it, and being positive, mm. trust me, there's a lot of dark stuff that goes oh, on too. I have no doubt. I think wherever drugs and all that yeah. sort of stuff is involved, there is a darker element. You don't need to get sucked into it, but I think it's just, it's ever present because that's what it kind of pairs itself up with because you leave yourself open and vulnerable. 100%. And I didn't do um, the way that maybe, I guess you should do those things without really, I was completely naive, I guess you could say. And that's when I went through experiences where, I mean, I saw the craziest, darkest beings of my life. I saw uh, just my life go to complete crap. Mm -hmm. And I lost pretty much everything at 21 years old, like had a full-time job and everything. It went out of business in 2006, right before the economy started taking down. I was mm -hmm. in boats. Boats went before homes. Well, they're a luxury. Yeah. Yep. So then I went to cars and that and, and then that's when it was like, I need to do astrology full time. Okay. So there are two things and I'm not quite sure on the timeline. So I'm going to ask about both of them and then you can put them in sure. context. You did reality TV. I'm right. curious about that because I've done reality TV mm -hmm. back in Australia. The second thing is you were homeless for a time and yeah. you often talk about that. So which came first? So, well, the reality TV, the first one was 2005. Mm -hmm. I did a show uh, on MTV called Parental Control. And back then, that was like the first of reality. Real World was the first reality mm -hmm. show. And then it was these dating shows that MTV brought out. But they were very extreme. And they were all LA, Orange County based because yeah. that was where they got all their talent. And so we got reruns all the time. And then I did Next with the Next Bus, where it's like, five guys or five girls in a bus, and then the person who's going to pick the dates can basically have five choices and just say, next, ah, okay. next. It was, it was a really big show. <laughs> so MTV had me do both of them back to back. So right. I was on two shows replaying all the time. Mm -hmm. And that was where I was like, if I combine this with astrology, there's something there. Okay, so the astrology was not a part of the first two. Well, it was on the second. And next, I, I won the show and got the girl by being like, what sign are you? She was like, I'm a Libra. And I'm like, oh, I'm a Leo. And she was like, I love astrology. Okay. So it was very basic. Yeah. I didn't come off as an astrologer. Sure. But then the timeline of the homelessness came where I fully jumped after my third reality show, which was ABC True Beauty, which was mm -hmm. huge. And that one, you know. See, even I saw that one yeah. in Australia. And that one, I came out as a full-blown astrologer. Yes. And that was a big deal. Like, they were really weird about it at first. ABC was kind of like, but they took a chance because they were okay. like, this is definitely going to raise eyebrows. Sure. And that's when I jumped into no longer working the nine to five. And... Right after the show, you learn that um, a reality show is not going to just give you all you want and just be an easy life. Like that just no. you assume thinks that, you know, you And back that. then, there wasn't also the added bonus, if you did reality TV, of trying to turn um, that into influencer 
Correct. So there was no Instagram. Yeah. It was MySpace and, and Facebook mm -hmm. switch over. And then they don't want you on those. Back no. then, do you remember that? They restrict you from it. 2013, when I did The Bachelor, that we had to sign contracts. You will yeah. not be on social media. Yeah. A lot of us broke that. Um, but it was the show didn't support it, whereas right. now I think shows embrace yeah. it and will do everything they can to push you. But yeah. back then, completely different story. Correct. And so it was at that moment, and I went through that experience in 2010 where didn't get any following from it mm -hmm. because they made us take it all down and was doing astrology and basically ended up on Venice Boulevard doing readings for, for donation. Wow. And that's when I'm like, I need to figure something out. All I had was a laptop. So I just started talking to my laptop on YouTube and I said, I'm gonna do this every day and I will not, and I, it's been seven plus years later and I have not, I've done a video every day. I think I've missed one day and it was because the internet didn't work, but I still got a blog out. But your followers get very upset if you miss a day, if you miss a start time, they are well i haven't missed a day so that's the well, whole thing but no, yeah but, but, the but time, do you know what yeah. i mean if like the time timing, is weird or yeah they're uh they're very passionate which I, which i think is an incredible thing because i think it brings great conversations and light to the world yeah. it's just it's fascinating to watch because i haven't seen such passion for um an astrologer before mm. but let's go back so how long were you homeless for there's been three times. Okay. So one was two and a half months. That was in 2012 when there was the Venice Boulevard mm -hmm. thing in 2011 and 2012. It was like back and forth I was doing that. And then uh, previously to that, believe it or not, after I got kicked out of the military, there was a little bit of homelessness there and then I got a job. So, and then there was a third time where it was kind of like a couple days Okay. But it was that two and a half months that was the hardest while I was an astrologer, while I was doing the daily videos. Mm -hmm. So if you watch my first basically three months of daily videos, I'm, ho I'm homeless. Wow. And look, I, where I live, we have a lot of homeless people um, sort of right at the end of my street. We have a lot of veterans, but then there are people who get kind of lost in that whole world. And it's so difficult to pull yourself out. So yeah. I take my hat off to you for being able to stay focused and actually do that for yourself the focus was the work though doing yeah. the daily video and that was something that wasn't done back then on youtube nobody was doing a daily inspirational horoscope video yeah like it was it, it was like you know there was one guy christopher wateki who's actually like my teacher who was doing it but then he kind of switched modes and mm -hmm. And he was doing sun signs and i'm like you know what i'm gonna hit everybody that was the yeah. thing that i really brought to the market was like why keep going into these individual sun signs so much? Mm -hmm. Let me talk to everybody as a global sense in it that we're all one, that we're all going through the same thing. And that brings me to another huge question I, that I have. But before we get to that, what I want to know is you essentially have an added superpower that most of us don't have in that you are able to look at the astrology and understand it in a way that majority of the population can't. Does that help you? avoid making bad life decisions because i mean there are moments in time where for a lot of us there's something we desperately want to do our intuition says no don't do it but we do it anyway because we're like yeah i'm being silly i'm being scared whatever it may be you have that added power of being able to go the astrology says this is that enough to deter you if there's something you want to do badly enough or do you i would say that it's like uh it's kind of like being uh, in a pool, I guess, and knowing how deep can you swim. Mm -hmm. That I, 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 the astrology lets me know where the borders are. Okay. And so I've jumped enough in my life over the border to know that there's a raptor in Jurassic Park there and I need to jump back over. Sure. And I would say that I have my own inner like raptor inside of me um, that I call Shredder. Okay. And when Shredder is coming out and Shredder has its hungers in every way of life that I use the astrology as kind of a gauge of like, yeah, no. And that's what I'm translating to people is I know they all have their own inner Shredder. They all have oh their God, own yes. inner. There is a, even a reptile, you know, part of our brainstem, right? So there's a part of me that's 
connecting with this very high spiritual positive aspect, mm -hmm. but also knowing that underlying in that is this shadow work, this deeper kind of reptilian, reptile, darker shade. And a lot of people in the love and light spiritual community only want to talk about that yeah. without realizing that without doing the shadow work, that the light won't be as bright, you know, and that we have to keep control of that. The I love that you talk about Shredder because I have a friend back in Australia who I did therapy with for many, many years, and she talks to the Shredder and whoever else we have within us that make up our personality. It is the greatest thing mm -hmm. I have ever done for myself, and I just love that that's yeah. something that you sort of recognize within yourself. Okay, so you start doing the videos. Does Facebook shift it for you, or do you start gaining traction while you're on YouTube? It was YouTube that that it was, was all YouTube. the traction, yeah. Okay. And then Facebook became more of a thing because groups had come out, and I was like, well, I'll just start a group. And that really was like, I was one of the first astrology groups on, on Facebook. And then when um, live streaming came out, I went and had a, a little studio, and I bought the, the, all the live stream equipment right away and was doing multiple cameras in 2015 and 16 when nobody was doing mm. that. And then in 2018, um, uh, my partner Abby and I went and got, we have a 13,000 square foot studio space. And so I went, and we're going with full blown cinema cameras. We're going with full blown, and that's why you see the shows today where they are full big sets, you know? Like it's, we're doing like big TV, full sets, TV everything and full blown high def 4K cinema cameras with it all. Well, the production and value is phenomenal. Thank you. And that's been, that's what I would say the traction is on Facebook or anywhere because when we were going on Facebook, it's like we were getting 1.2, 1.3 thousand people watching with celebrities that are getting like 300, 400 with yeah. millions of followers. And it was really because people were like, wow, this is hitting me. And this is like being presented where I'm showing the charts. And I've just always been a tech nerd my whole life. Mm. So, oh my God, we're running out of time and I feel like we're only halfway through. It's all good. Okay, so um, you talked before, and this was the big question that I had, you talked before about how you do a general astrology. Um, so you let the your followers know about what's going on just generally in the sky, not necessarily related to Leo or Aries or any of the other things. But in that, you're essentially educating people because you not only say, this is what's going on, this is the energy it'll create, and you do go against the norms of grandma's astrology. Yeah. Um, but you give historical examples to explain what you mean. And I think by doing that, you're educating the masses so that there is a deeper understanding of astrology. Was that your intention or is that just sort of a byproduct of how you? I would say that that's the byproduct of being a real astrologer, that there's the spiritual side, but there's the scientific side. Mm -hmm. And so there's the need to use history, to use events, to create what we call as a horoscope, but a hypothesis about things, right? But to have backup, like, okay, the last time that these planets met in these spots, that happened then, the last time this happened, and starting to find those patterns and correlations, but that when I can awake people to do that for themselves, mm -hmm. then they start to wake up and go, whoa, that's true. And I think that there's this other aspect, like, as you're talking about it, like, I do the general because I want people to see that we are all going through the same thing all the time. Now, it stretches out, of course, into very individual forms too, which I do do sun sign horoscopes on my apps. Yes. But there's a whole element here about seeing the what I call the collective consciousness, which that's really when I was homeless in 2012, I came out with illuminating the collective consciousness. And it was at a time when it was more about the collective unconscious always mm -hmm. being talked about. So that was, yeah, my spell, I guess you could say that I put out there. Positive spell though. Of course. Always white light. Yeah. Um, how, where does this knowledge for history come from? I mean, you, mm. it seems to just be so abundant. It's, you're forever coming out with facts and they're not the same facts. They're different ones. Do you, do you learn about them as you're looking at the astrology so you go back or is it stuff that you've learned before and you're able to just recall it? It's both. I grew up with a very intelligent family and grandfathers who were very into history, especially my father's dad. 
Um, and I also do the history myself. I do the research myself, and then I know a lot about history because that was my number one subject in school. Mm -hmm. um, ironically, it wasn't math, and I'm doing math every day, but <laughs> it's history. I'm fascinated by it, and it's just something that I do a lot of research. I do like big shows, like I'll rent out hotels, like I did Age of Deception, or mm -hmm. I do these things where I go and research for months before I present deep information. And I say that the history part is, being an astrologer, I'm labeled as a sinner, I'm labeled as that I'm going to hell, I'm labeled as a schizophrenic from the science community. So I had to go do deep research on myself to make sure I wasn't either one of those. And when you come to the bottom of it all, it's neither. And, no, it's and, and, their fear of what correct. you're putting out into the world. Yeah. Okay, so we are really running out of time. So I'll ask one of the fans questions, which I really loved. Do you think you've done this work before in a past life? I would say I did this work in a past life, not in a public sense. I did it okay. in a private sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned it from Merlin after a long and hard time in Camelot from past lives. And um, I learned it in my own hut and practiced it in my own world, but I had never gone public with it. I get goosebumps talking about all of this. I do mm. feel like we're going to need to do a part two at some point because I for feel sure. like we're not all the way at the end of this conversation. Uh, for people that aren't already following you, the new platform is... HiVibe.tv, yeah, and we have iOS app coming out. We just had Android, Apple TV, Roku, and um, Amazon Fire. David, thank you so much for coming in and doing this. I'm looking forward to the next conversation that we have. So am I. That is it for this episode of Sadie Says. Stay tuned because I think we will get David back in here, providing he has the time. I'm Natalie Sadie. Until next time, this is Sadie Says.